Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're back out on the Audi TT and there are a few jobs that I need to just tie up to get the steering and the front end feeling a little bit more tighter. And that mainly is down to one of those, the tie rod ends. These are again common failure points if uh, they don't get regularly serviced. So that's one job and the other one is the front drop links which uh, are a component piece that really uh, helps the suspension feel a lot better and tighter. And if you're getting those nasty knocks or uh, squeaks, then generally those two items are the first place to start. So we're gonna get those two changed. The other thing I'm gonna sort out is that oil sump plug leak. And I have a little trick up my sleeve to do this without losing any oil from the engine. Let's get out there and sort it out. <laughs> So it's a nice cold frosty morning, fog is coming in but uh, what we need to do now is get rid of this wheel and start to look at the component pieces which are in situ that we need to remove. Okay, so the wheel's off, and uh, one of the things I wanted just to point out to you as well is that these discs with the holding screw, a lot of these tend to seize and snap off, and it's exactly what happened to mine. So uh, previously when I was just inspecting the car, I noticed that this had snapped off, so you can actually hold the disc in place with the, the lug nuts or uh, studs when you put the wheel back on, but... Um, a good practice really is to drill out the the hole, drill out the stud that snapped, uh, which joins to the hub behind. It's just a hole, so nothing to worry about. You can see that I I drilled it out and I did a Healy coil to refit, and that is a new locating nut. I think it was a pack of I don't know, pack of ten for 195. Uh, I think they're M6 16 mil. So again, that hole's now all prepped ready and I can refit a nice new holding screw. Right, next thing on, here is the drop link. As you can see, it's attached to the suspension. Uh, in particular, the, let's just try and get at the back here. That you can see it's attached to the shock and on the anti-roll bar at the bottom. So it's just literally two bolts off and uh, fit the new one likewise with as you can see here the tie rod end one nut you do need a fork to separate it to uh, to force that apart so I've got that at the ready which you can see there and uh, the best uh, little bit of, of a recommendation is just to put a jack just under here just to lift the whole hub and suspension upwards just to take the pressure of it falling down with the wheel off currently and hanging that makes these bolts and everything come apart a lot easier so let's get on and do that So you can just see that uh, I just cracked the bolt off using my torque wrench and you just slot an 18 mil over the end of the bolt there. Hold it on that side with a 19 mil spanner 
think a 19 would fit there as well, but it seems like an 18 is a bit more snug. And literally, just turn this off. It's a little bit stiff as you can imagine. The spanner holds it in place and this should pop off nicely. Right, so we got the front drop link on the right hand side of the car removed and as you can see we have the drop link end is like jelly both of these there's no friction at all in those the new one as you say you actually need quite a bit of force to move it so these were long overdue when you put this back together, just make sure you obviously have the right hand side and the left hand side the right way round in terms of uh, the bars themselves. It's a 17mm to hold that in place and then a 19mm on the top nut just to tighten it all down. So let's get this all back on the car. So you would have seen me just smashing this bolt with the impact gun what you can see just on the top there is an allen key shaped thread area that you ultimately hold on to as you do the final twist to undo this tie rod end now as you can see i think someone's had a smash at this before so there's there's no size that actually fits well other than a six that just flops out so I don't know if these are the original ones that came on the car or if they were done a long long time ago but um, that being said I'm gonna have to cut this out now so I've got the the faithful Dremel with a diamond cutter on the end I'm gonna have to cut through the bolt to just remove this whole piece um, I've already undone this and just marked it behind just to know exactly the the rough sort of number of turns that this will come off but um yeah the joy of old cars i guess so let's uh, start cutting through this <laughs> Okay, so we cut through that bolt, that went through quite uh, easily. And now, with a little bit of help, we have removed that from the hub. So now I just have to unwind this and uh, refit the new one. Okay, five days later and a magical thing has just happened. I've finally got that tie rod end off and uh, you can see there the mark where it was situated and what a nightmare that was so it was left in dot four brake fluid for five days i used the spanner the monkey wrench and a persuader and finally it gave up <laughs> so let's get the new one fitted and uh, reassemble Okay, finally, it's in. The new tie rod is fitted. We've also greased the end just so uh, that doesn't rust out again, which was the Allen key holder as you tighten the bolt down. 
uh, put some lubrication on the threads as this one back on so hopefully that will never stick again whoever gets to uh, try that one again and uh, also the new drop link as well so that finally completes the right hand side now onto the left hand side Okay, so you would have seen that I've got uh, the tie rod end apart. I've also loosened off the bottom of the drop link connector to the anti-roll bar. And on this particular side, what I have to get done as well, if you can just make out there, you will see, I'll just point that the top of the spring has cracked off and it's a common failure on these. And there is the uh, the culprit itself, but thankfully I found a nice used one on eBay, an original part, just like this with the, the markings from exactly the same model for £6. <laughs> so uh, someone else had uh, gone through the pain of having a cracked spring and they replaced both of those springs with Audi and uh, were selling the one that was still in good working order so I grabbed it and um, just spruced it up a little bit ready for fitting on this side so we've got to drop all of the uh, the suspension or the strut itself just remove it from there you can actually replace the spring without having to uh, do the dreaded removal at the bottom here which uh, can be pretty painful so uh, yeah let's get on and start removing the top of the strut and uh, get this uh, spring replaced Okay, so you can see that that took a little bit of engineering just to move the strut into a place where you could slide ultimately the spring off of the strut. It does need to be compressed quite some uh, with some force, so please if you're doing this be very careful of these. these this can be very dangerous if you get it wrong. So I will unloosen these now and then do exactly the same to the new one and refit back onto the strut and then get this drop link changed and hopefully this one will come off and won't be such a pain as the other side. Let's do it. Okay, so there's the spring all compressed ready to refit here you see the top of the strut mount with the bearing I've just actually put some silicon uh, in there it's actually in very good condition so better than what I thought I had bought spare ones but um, to be honest really doesn't need changing it's uh, there's no cracks no visible signs bearing works really well so I'm gonna just uh, refit the spring now and uh, put everything back together after obviously <laughs> changing this one hopefully which will come apart and the drop link so let's get on and refit the spring
Okay, so I have removed the top strut mount, which is there, which you can see separates from the bearing and the holding plate for the spring, which is underneath. Uh, you do have to remove that to put the spring on. Uh, <laughs> so, yep, yeah, you learn as you go, as they say. So um, it was very easy just to undo if you got the right tools, that is. But uh, yeah, let's start putting back together all of this. And hopefully it all fits nicely. Okay, so we have the top of the strut all bolted down and in place. Next, we will see just underneath, everything is moving as it should. Nothing out of place, which is great. As you would have seen, I have also removed the drop link bar, which I will replace now. But firstly, I need to just get this old tie rod end off and fit the new one. So let's crack on with that. Okay, so we managed to get the tie rod end done. It was an absolute pig, just like the other side was. It was seized, had to use heat, loads of uh, penetrating fluid, even let it sit in dot four brake fluid for a while, and uh, it finally cracked. So, yep, good, finally done. Uh, drop link is also complete, and the new spring is in so this side is all complete and uh, I can get this all buttoned up get the wheels back on and then finally get it in for some tracking as well just to make sure that everything is straight and true ah, so another tick in the box okay so we have an oil leak from the oil sump plug underneath as you can see it's weeping which uh, suggests that maybe this was over tightened on the last service so it's a bit of a pain ideally what you want to be able to do is uh, replace that washer without draining the oil so there's a neat little trick that I'm gonna try to see if I can actually get that done without draining any oil so I have the oil pan just underneath just in case this doesn't go to plan but ideally this is the plan As you can see, there's a hoover on top of the engine, which uh, I've sealed as best I can with the tube going into the oil inlet. The idea being that when you turn this hoover on, it creates a vacuum, not strong enough to suck all the oil out of the engine, but strong enough to hold the oil in place. So uh, let's give it a try. Thank you. 
<laughs> so that actually worked. This little trick does do the job. And just to prove it, let's just get under the car. And as you can see, the sump plug is no longer leaking. And I didn't have to drain the oil. So, jobs are good and on that one, very, very cool. Okay, so we've got the front of the car buttoned up. All the suspension and tie rod ends are good to go once again. I think the main knocking really that I was hearing was from that spring that had snapped at the top, which meant it came off its bracket, which was attached to the strut itself, meaning the spring was actually forced up into the wing and uh, the mounting plate where the actual strut fits to. So you would have heard the the scraping and the noise as that went back and forth across that plate. So it's great now that uh, that's all fixed. The tie rod ends, they are real, real pain, uh, especially when you're working on a driveway. When the car is in a lift on, you know, in a garage, you've, you've got the leverage underneath uh, and the room and the space to, to be able to get that leverage to undo, uh, you know, bolts and screws and nuts and so on that are, are, are putting up a fight. So a lot of the effort was really around heating and penetrating fluid and all of that good stuff and leaving it for a while. So it, you know, it was over a couple of days that I had to get those uh, removed. But hey, it's done now. They're all greased up, ready to go. And uh, the next step is really get a couple of new tires on, which I'm going to be doing tomorrow, and then getting the tracking done. So that will mean the front end, you know, the front end of this car it should be straight and true and back to uh, a good standard. Then I have to move on to some. Uh, what I would call cosmetic parts of the car, both interior and exterior, which will be uh, coming up in the videos to come. So again, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and the next video will be along very soon.